Among the different body styles of the new Mercedes C-Class facelift, there is still one that is my personal favorite. And this is the Mercedes C-Class convertible. We'll test it here for you today as a C400, truly a dream combination. An exterior, interior and a driving pleasure presentation. Join me on this convertible ride on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Ta-da! Here it is, my favorite front grille for a Mercedes C-Class or for a Mercedes in general, the so-called diamond pin grille. We get here in the AMG line of this C-Class Cabriolet. Also with the facelift, we got a changed LED daytime running light signature. Cabriolet and the coupe come with LED headlamps standard. Usually it starts at, you know, um, below that. Above that is the high beam. This one here, the multi-beam LED, that is optional then, that you also get LED for the high beam then. And in general, there are not so many the other changes for the face from the exterior. You can see here a design line on the splitting here in the very middle. Big Mercedes star right there. And also they hide all the sensors for the assistance systems behind that. I think overall it's a good solution. And also the AMG line has a contrast here in the lower part, a little bit stronger bumper. The color for today is diamond white. 4 meters 68 or 15 foot 3 is the total length. That's the mid-size segment. Also one of the reasons why this car is quite comfortable, unlike some very, very small convertibles or unlike some of the super, super, super sports cars convertibles. It's the AMG line and those ones are the optional 19-inch AMG wheels with huge brake discs you can also see. Also then with a night package, then with dark mirror caps. And we can open and close the convertible roof already with the key here. And well, you already see the color combination with the red seats there. And well, <laughs> that comes also with the, um, with the red top then. That would be a little bit too much for me. You know, I like some daring color combinations, but mm, white to red, I'm not sure. Would it be your favorite? Tell me in the comments. The roof is also available in different other colors. You can go with a normal black, for example, but also with the blue. This is also very cool. So if you, for example, pick Thomas Blue and then also have a blue convertible roof, and then maybe with beige seats or with just black or with uh, black gray mix seats, that would be my favorite color combination. And then once more, very handy, comes, you know, when you at the next vegan ice cream parlor. <laughs> then you can open and close the roof just by sitting there and show off a little bit or prepare your next ride then directly with the key. Of course, you can also do it from the inside, but this is surely one of the most fancy ways. And if you get out of the vehicle and you're in a narrow parking lot, even if the, you know, um, need some more room or something, then you can also press it again, the opening button and the windows are lowered and then you can get in like this you know like when it's very narrow here like this and then get in off the car out of the car easier um, when the windows would be up I would need more space right there so overall pretty cool I think it still looks great open both and closed and here we go with the rear and convertible and coupe are characterized by those horizontally drawn taillights which I think is the more beautiful pick it also has a very fluent line here at the rear. 
it's no separate wing attached here that would be in the c43 i think this way it's also more elegant overall a very round shape in the rear the top tips here by the way they're just fake the real exhaust is hidden in there and c400 means it's already a six cylinder engine we'll soon take a look at that one formatic it's the all-way drive so it's better the you know the um you get everything package so to say we also have the roof up at the moment so you can see how it looks like also from the rear shape and depending if it's up or down it will also change how much luggage compartment you have available of course we'll also check that out very soon The car key has been updated, you now get the one from the E-Class, but with a matte design, I really like it, and it's slim and light. Of course, you also have the keyless entry, like, um, you know, this way you close it, this way you open it. And, ta -da! and I have the roof closed at the moment because of the headroom test. You get several different interior stylings, first of all, the door is very wide, that you can also access the rear. Um, leather red style here, soft touch at the top part, then the matte wood style, new matte, new wood trims available since the facelift now. There you control the seats so with memory function. Well, with the red color then, that's of course matter of taste, I would not go for it. And it's also this Disney uh, leather line. Vermis the sound system, optional, really expensive. This is actually the main problem of this vehicle. It starts at about 50,000 euros and it can easier get even more expensive. Then the interior right here, you can see those are the sport seats. You start with the base seat, which is already somewhat sporty, but this one then the optional sport seat and also animal skin pack. But this convertible is also available with fabric and leather red mix or also with Alcantara on the inside and leather red outside. So you have plenty of more sustainable choices and they're also better because you don't need a seat cooling, which is equipped with this one here. But then if you don't sweat so much, it's also better. And um, yeah, I have to admit, I sometimes use the configurator and um, build me one of these ones here. <laughs> so <laughs> let's continue with our review. Seating position, and that's what I like about mid-size convertibles. It's fairly comfortable, not as in those tiny or in the um, very, very sporty convertibles with the um, roof. Up. I still have plenty of headroom with my meters 86 or 6 foot 1. So that's okay, even if we would you know, put the seat here a little bit higher or something. The steering wheel can be adjusted. There's this column to control it. One column is missing, the one for the Distronic Plus that moved to the steering wheel now. I'll soon show you that. Also, the, you know, the, the new facelift changes you will see better when you get behind me. But overall, I mean, you sit like being in a normal mid-size sedan or like in a normal C-Class, so the cars are not that different, just it can open the roof here. And that makes it also, you know, um, uh, somehow calculated because you know what you get. So in this interior overview, you can see the new matte wood style is implemented right here. It feels great, also doesn't leave any fingerprints and look here, the whole middle console covered in that. Pretty cool. And then matte aluminum as a contrast. The screen setup, it starts with 5.5, a small one left and seven inch on the right side. And then optional digital 12.3, all digital instruments left. And on the right, the optional 10.25 inch. So this is the maximum setup, of course. Again, adds more price to this already expensive car. But this way, it looks quite fancy. Sadly, no touchscreen yet. You have to either control it with a normal center control knob in the lower part, which has a nice clicking sound though. Or you can use this touchpad here. This is also possible. And then there's a new system, especially for the driver. They thought, let's put it on the steering wheel and let's control the right side here with the right thumb. So that's possible and 
also always a great visualization on the screen when you have you know the different stuff here so the software really looks pretty cool sometimes from the menu it's a little bit complicated i feel um, but it looks at least pretty fancy and as a driver it's nice to be able to zoom in and out just with keep your hands at the steering wheel for sure and on the left side then you have another touch button then you can control the instruments you have also different views for example and um, you can put your radio information there also telephone this one is also equipped with a head-up display and then for example can with the left thumb control where the position of the head-up display will be. So you're a little bit more flexible, but then it also makes it a little bit more complicated. You can also, also pick a different style for the whole system, like this classic style, for example, or also a sporty style. Why not? And I think I really like the progressive one. And to show you the camera, I have to turn on the engine, sadly. And um, then you have the camera system, for example, view to the front, different angle, fake drone view from above, then also the um, protect my alloys view. So you can see this is here the right tire, the other one is the left one. So to protect those 19 inch precious ones, rear view, and also rear view with different angle and this drone view from above. That's pretty fancy and a great resolution they are offering. So some cubby holes here with the cover, cup holders on USB supply. You can also connect the charge the smartphone right there. And then this area is here also for the inductive charging. You can put it right there. And then it will also inductively charge if you have that option. Then this classic control knob I showed you that earlier. This is also the camera button I've just been pressing. Dynamic select to select drive mode, and then the lower part have this nice opening of the middle console and two more USB supplies right there and then there's also a special button right there next to the convertible opening and closing this is for all the roofs and this one here is for the special wind deflector this is the so-called air cap system and it consists of two parts small wind deflector in the rear and then the top one that is leading the airstream from the top part of the car all over the vehicle that you're you know, not distracted by this wind especially at higher speeds lower speeds very warm sunshine you might not care but maybe like 100 120 kilometers on the motorway you can see the lower part here the wind the rear part the wind deflector so a small one the advantage of this system is that you don't need to install a manual wind deflector just behind you and you're always flexible to use the rear seats whenever you want or maybe like you want to switch on something but you know I've tested the system before and it's good it's a nice idea and very versatile well it looks pretty crazy you know from the outside then it doesn't make the car any beautiful um, but I'm still a fan of a classic wind deflector because it is just more effective still and if you come closer you can still see there are those mounts left here. So this is where the normal wind deflector could come in. And Mercedes says, both for the C-Class and for the E-Class, you can still get also the manual wind deflector. And recently we had um, you know, one case also from you guys who bought the vehicle. It was actually even possible to mount both. So the classic wind deflector and get this option. If you're really <laughs> a little bit more wind sensitive and want the least wind noise here inside and you know the least airstream i would advise you just to go for the cheap option the normal wind deflector maybe have some manual work at times but then have a very effective one and save the money for this system then if you buy it full spec all the money then you can also go for this one but then i would still get somehow you know the, the classic one that at autobahn riding for example when you say ah you know i'll make a transition like a liaison two hours on the motorway then put the classic one in Another question is also, can I fit here in the rear? Nice thing is that there's this, when you have the all electric seats here, it raises up and forward automatically and then you have a very easy entry. That's pretty cool. Of course, even easier, easier when the roof is up. Uh, sorry, when the roof is down. So, and then 
Let's see here. When the seat's going back. Oh, oh squishing my knees. That's <laughs> okay. And then it stays. I mean, it's a good system, but this is not exactly my seating position mm, in the front. Well, it is fairly comfortable here in the rear. You also have enough room. That's actually not no problem. You can also raise the head restraints, I think. Or not. Obviously not, no. This one made the impression as it could be raised, but this one is obviously fixed because it's a little bit, um, you know, could be a little bit higher for my taste, actually. Um, but, you know, it is possible to drive with four adults in here for, you know, shorter trips. You see, I got the co-driver seat as I had the driver seat before. There you can see the difference. So it's not in the real driving position I had. If I would have the real driving position, um, you know, then I think, well, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't really fit knee, knee room wise. And the question is, could I now still sit in the front with my size? So I have to um, climb over, I guess. Um, but first, I want to show you when we close the roof now, would the roof actually, um, you know, would, would, it, would it be suitable? Uh, no, this is the air cap. Let's close the roof. Apply the brakes before operating the soft top when stationary. So, yeah, we made an edit there. So, uh, I could sit here still now when I'm in the rear, but I couldn't drive that well, so I need a smaller passenger behind me. Um, yeah, that's it. But now the question is when I close the roof again. Can I still sit in the rear, also headroom-wise? We'll test that out. So first of all here, and yeah, I did apply the brakes now while stationary. Oh, please don't hit me. And in front, it's actually no problem. So, let's maybe, there we go. No other rear window. Now getting back to the rear again. It's not that easy as before. So I have to be ducked, ducked a little bit. And now someone again states a time code, Thomas in the rear seat. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still okay if I'm, you know, a little bit ducked, but I couldn't really put my head upright, but at least I don't hit my head as it's soft. And by the way, you know, uh, several layers here to give you a very good insulation. And one of the nice features is this belt reacher, automatic, comes towards you when you close the door and when you open it, it goes back again. So what about the trunk area? Because if you think about getting this one as a primary vehicle, well, this setup here is at the moment as the roof would be down and it is like this here. And then you have this room available. If I put a backpack in there, I can show you how that one works like this. So yes, it is of course limited uh, as with most convertibles, but when you have the roof up, like we have at the moment, there's a basket below that. Um, I can also show you that, you know, with this tripod bag of Jonas, which could be my golf bag I don't own, playing at the golf course I'm not a member with, with the car I don't have. <laughs> Sorry, I got that joke from Brian. X7 episode. So um, the tripod bag does fit here. Could it be maybe also a golf bag? I'm not quite sure. Maybe. But you know, here in this case here, I can also push this one and then you have more room available. It can also load through things a little bit and you can even flip the seats here on the left and the right side, both the same buttons to release. And there and then, well, with the back here, I can maybe give it a push. Uh, no, <laughs> so it's empty, so I can't. So I have to go around then, and well, unless the roof is down, it also takes some time, like this and this. Uh, and you have to check that the seat belt also is not blocking it, like this. Hey guys, and then you can also load through longer things, so you are, you know, at some point flexible, and you can also put things in the rear bench. That's possible as well. Unlike with the new Audi A5 convertible, where they made that one automatic now, you still have to press this button in the top part. If you want to open the roof again, press this button. 
then this part comes down again. Then you can open it. As I said, in the new A5, they made it automatically now that when you push it in, I think there's even now a button to push it in and out. You have to check that review from the A5 convertible. But at least I know, even if it's pushed in and you open the roof, it's automatically flipping out. This is maybe a function Mercedes could also introduce. And I also want to show you when you release the back seats, because, well, you could put some more luggage on the back seats or you could um, just put them down, even if you don't, um, it's with a belt there. <laughs> it, it blocks basically the phone. Now I have to be gentle then to, put, to put it out or to the side. There we go. Because in this way you can also put the bags up here now. That way you know you just protect the seat cover for example, no matter what you have, and then you can put the bags right there. This would also be a solution. Time for some music. <laughs> And this is just a lever to unleash the hood. And well, music can also come from this engine because this one is already the six cylinder with 333 horsepower. Difference to the C43 is now the facelifted C43 has 390 horsepower that the difference is a little bit bigger, but the acceleration difference is not that huge. This one here, 5.2 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That is just a difference of half a second then to the first AMG model. So this one already pretty powerful. And if you want to go a little bit smaller, Mercedes also gives you some diesels. Well, I'm not sure if the convertible connection is really useful then. And then there's a two liter petrol and the new 1.5 liter petrol. The first one with the 48 volt board net. So you get either C200 or a C300. This one here, the C400. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with Jonas also on in the car. And so we had a so short delay because Brian just called us and ruined the first take. Damn it, Brian. <laughs> so we deliver you different aspects. Acceleration, for example. We could do that right now, or maybe not. The car's behind us. So we'll soon show you the um, acceleration here with the C400. Tell you everything you need to know about the wind noise, just with windows up air cap without the air cap with the air cap with this wind deflector and also some agile driving roads will be ahead so all the different aspects will be covered first of all what's the main characteristic of this vehicle when driving it it is surely comfort and enjoying this convertible ride it is really a dream and at the moment i don't have any wind deflector mounted and at about 70 kilometers an hour it's really a super relaxed feeling already car is however very stable on the road and the suspension really masters both comfort and sportiness. You know optional you can also get the air suspension next to, uh, next to a normal adaptive suspension. So you have different suspension choices there. All will somewhat be fine. So you'll also be fine with the base suspension. The air suspension of course gives you the best comfort then and also the most flexibility um, between the different driving modes. The steering feel is rather natural. Mercedes doesn't use it in a too progressive way actually, so you have to steer a little bit more than for example with you know Audi and Volkswagen for example which have a rather progressive setup. It's again a matter of personal taste and really feel at home in this vehicle if you maybe own a normal C-Class before, it also will not be any transition or something. So really good to enjoy. Also when you have the windows lowered, we can't do it at the moment because of the camera at low speeds or maybe also at uh, you know, high temperatures will actually be no problem at all. And so what I will do now, because we're leaving this small village, I'll let the cars behind us pass, so then actually accelerate a little bit better. 
Oh, there's also a C-Class T model, an estate coming right now in the camera. Here it is. Oh, in Thomas Blue. I want to have that one. <laughs> so we have the different driving modes and let's also hear how that engine sounds. Let's go to the Sport Plus mode as well. Then you have more feedback directly from the throttle. And now we have no one behind us. We can also go to zero and you'll see that this one here does really come close to a C43 acceleration. Well, and that was already 100. Did anyone count? You could also see the speed in the small display. Of course, if you compare it to a C43, you do not have this extreme sound. You know, the C43 really has a kick ass sound for sure. This one here more drawn back, but the basic engine is the same. And so it already delivers you a lot of performance. But the C400 is surely the one when you more want to relax a little bit, more enjoy, but still want to have the power reserves maybe for close top driving on the motorway or something like that. Oh, there's a competitor, BMW 4 Series convertible next to the other main competitor, the Audi A5 convertible. So, and you know, from this performance ride, I can go back to the normal comfort mode. The steering is then, for example, a little bit lighter. And I can relax again once more. Of course, at lower speeds, I don't, do not need any wind deflector stuff or something. The overview is, well, you know, it's a classic car form. Let's take it that way. So the overview is not the best. Here in the convertible, you don't have any P pillar, therefore you also don't have a blind spot. But you, we do have the blind spot warning if you want to go for the assistance system, so that's possible. You can also see, um, I think uh, it was possible that you can see the head-up display on the small camera. That's pretty seldom. Usually it just can be viewed with the driver's view directly. But pretty interesting that we have that one here now. And a little bit of information overload maybe in the max spec where I can see destination kilometers, time, some assistance system info, GPS, speed and maximum speed. But you can also tune it in the digital gauges that you just see, for example, only the speed if you, if you want so That's also possible. So again, this car for me is a perfect convertible because I have the driving fun. It's agile enough. More agile than that Mercedes E-Class convertible, for example. But at the same time, you have the comfort and I really prefer this also to the E-Class. The E-Class is, of course, very comfortable as well, but it's also feeling a little bit bulky. When I'm here in the corners now, I feel that this one here is just less in weight. So it is really fun also to push it through faster corners without feeling that you're getting pushed out, uh, out of the corner, you know, on, on the outer bank, because it would be too heavy. So this one also, you know, good for maybe Alpine regions. Now we are almost to 100 kilometers an hour and let's use this air cap. And while driving it up, it makes a wind noise and this is really interesting um, because you hear more wind noise from the top part because the wind is being transported over the cabin, but indeed, it, it's get it's you know it's getting less windy inside and also with the wind deflector in the rear so that's really a funny thing so the whoa that camper guy was a little bit off limits hmm. <laughs> this is how to go through life on tape also with dangerous situations so always pay attention to traffic guys don't talk to cameras so yeah I mean this air cap system again it works to get the wind out of the car and especially when you drive with people in the rear because if you would mount the classic wind deflector that wouldn't be <laughs> so good <laughs> for people in the rear sitting there um, unless there are maybe I don't know tiny dogs or cats in the rear or something but then again as it sounds a little bit louder I'm not quite sure what to think of the system again so I'm still a fan of the classic wind deflector because here at 100 
Yeah, maybe I have wind, less wind in my face, but I have more wind noise. So let's put it down again. Yeah, it's a different wind noise, I would have to say. Maybe you also hear it on camera. The wind noise is more spread. Maybe it would be, you know, on decibel meter, it would be maybe more silent with the air gap overall. You know, acceleration out of the corner, rear wheel bias. Nice. 30% to the front, 70 to the rear, by the way. The all-wheel drive distribution here, or was it, was it only with the AMG? Hmm, that's a tough question. I think I have to look it up again. If that's only, it, it is with the C43. I think it's also the same all-wheel drive train with the C400, I think. So now again the test. I get down with 90. Now we put it up again. It's like changing a sound system if you want the noise just come from the front or if you want the noise rather be all around you somehow. You can argue for and against it, but I'm still a fan, sorry, of the classic wind deflector. So we can, by the way, also while driving close to roof, uh, we have to limit it to a speed of 50 kilometers. So here we go. Now I'm driving 45. And here the hood is coming. That looks so spectacular, especially while driving. Here we go, because now we want to give you some motorway and also sometimes I get the question, ah, you know, I'm deciding between coupe and convertible because I want it to be more silent on the motorway as I'm driving on the motorway quite often. Uh, or what about those convertible soft tops? There's also the discussion about the soft tops in general. Mercedes, by the way, is with the next generation of the SL, will be going back to the soft top again from the hard top because soft top needs less space in the trunk. So we have more trunk available, also it's way less weight. And the modern fabric of those soft, soft tops are also quite durable, more durable than they were in the past. So but now we're closed and for convertible, it's really super silent in here. We'll also soon get to a higher speed again. Let's get back to the sport mode <laughs> for you. So now we're accelerated out again. A little bit of traffic here today, of course. So from 70, let's say from 80 kilometers, let's go. That's 150 almost. So also very flexible in the acceleration. Really cool. So now we're going back to the comfort mode. And also about assistance systems, we have the cruise control, for example, with the adaptive function that the distance to the car is being, who's pulling us from behind here. Just keeping a distance here, but I can, I can drive a little bit faster. I have six cylinders, so what about your four cylinder rear behind us there? Come on. <laughs> so, now keeping the distance in the car in front of us, when I set the cruise control, that's really, you know, it's a great system. And I also have the systems that uh, I've, I've been kept in the lane. You can go for that one if you like, but you can also deactivate it. So it is basically available. Um, let's see, yeah, there we go, you see. Of course, don't do it. Keep your hands at the steering wheel all the time. That's healthier for you but just to show you that it basically works. And if you want to drive more freely on the left side of the steering wheel, you can deactivate it, both the steering and the lane keeping assist. And then you can drive more yourself. And here I'm driving 180 kilometers in a convertible now. And well, yes, this is a difference to, uh, since, you know, at this, this time here, yesterday we tested the C43. You maybe, well, hopefully already tuned to that review as well. If not, tune into that one after finishing this one. And it is a difference, yeah, when you have the closed roof with the, with the sedan, definitely. But I mean, four convertible with 170 kilometers an hour, that's absolutely fine. And this is also a German issue with driving that fast, of course. So, 
let this Skoda Octavia probably an RS or something pass and let's see what's the speed where I would say this is super comfortable noise insulation wise with a convertible that one I think 140 kilometers an hour not an RS so at 140 it's super comfortable and the maximum motorway speed for most countries in the world will be about 130 kilometers and this is perfectly fine so I would say if you live in Germany and you're hammering all time like 160 kilometers something something like a motorway autobahn maybe the coupe makes sense then other than that you can easily go for the convertible because at those speeds here setting the cruise control it will be super fine you always have the possibility to open the roof also very stable at higher speeds here and if you ask me the BMW Frosty is convertible or the Audi A5 all three are awesome cars for sure the BMW with the hardtop for some who leave it outside parked maybe they say ah, it's more durable I feel that's something um, but the trunk of course is the smallest of those three the A5 is a little bit newer the car now this generation so it has some more tweaks which are nice A5 is maybe the little bit sportier also from a general layout. The C-Class is more the enjoyment car for sure. But then of course it depends on the very version you pick for example. All three really come close. I think it's rather a matter of preference. You can't really say this is the best car of those three, period. It's really a matter of preference. What is the most important thing for you? And you know styling of course is really different for example or some some of the unique features and stuff this one here is for sure among my favorite cars overall and yeah I admit I have been thinking about getting one of course without the red leather <laughs> well, let's see so time in the corner good stability again overall it's just a great setup they found here a Kayo can do really a lot of things with although the trunk could be a little bit bigger than for weekend trips and you will have to use the rear bench for example also the tripod is traveling with us now on the rear oh little tripod it's our children you know a tripod our tripods are our children Especially if you have the kick-ass carbon fiber tripod, which Jonas recently bought. Really cool thing. So, obviously we can drive a little bit faster here again. Overall, very good engine. So, I mean, I pushed it a little bit now. Now we're about 12 liters consumption. The convertible also will consume a little bit more. It's also a little bit heavier than the closed versions because you need to strengthen the material around the lower part of the vehicle. Um, what's the lowest consumption you could score basically if I have just here 110 kilometers set the cruise control and see what the car is doing hmm, I would expect that to be a little bit lower now as it well we're going uphill now but it's still not very very, very low um, let's go to 100 and see also because the RPM info is sometimes um, quite re relevant so now we're going rather straight so 100 kilometers and the rpm is about 1400 rpm so you can see by this displacement and the six cylinders you can also have it a very in a very calm ride so yeah eight liters something now we're going downhill of course so but that's something you know which would be the minimum and the average consumption will be something about in 10 to 11 and that's not really different from the C43 um, since it's basically the same engine the question is always how much do you really hammer the car maybe for some faster lane changes for you here to the left the right cool really a lot of fun to drive the car and let's see from our route we'll soon get off the motorway again and then we'll of course open again the roof that we can conclude this driving part with an open top 
Let's drive somewhat faster here now again. Yeah, at above 160 kilometers an hour, you start to hear the difference when driving a convertible. But then again, you just hear the difference because the car is so silent when it's at higher speed with a sedan or, or the coupe. Also for the co-driver here. Great. Great. Thumbs up from Jonas. <laughs> As he was filming, he was by the way mentioning, oh, this car is so small when filming. Well, it's not too small, but you know, Jonas is obviously more like a very big car guy. I mean, he's, he's a big guy, so um, Jonas needs big cars. <laughs> so now we're getting off the motorway. It's always a good test also for suspension. Let's go to the sport mode. Let the suspension be a little bit stiffer then in this setup. Brakes, you know, we've probably seen really big brakes on this car. Good deceleration that also camera equipment is all flying all over the vehicle. And now driven that this car too long for with close top for sure. Here we go. And that's again another thing about the soft top convertibles. Um, you know, just stopping for one or two seconds and then already continuing your ride. And if I would have a four series now with the hard top, I would have to, you know, park on the right side. And well, this would be possible here right now. Ah, fresh air, that's nice. But then again, hmm. the, the most crucial part is, by the way, when it's starting to rain. It's happened to me so often that when I was driving convertibles and it starts to rain and maybe you're in the middle of somewhere traffic and you cannot really stop at all, then you have a problem. <laughs> but with the soft top then, it's actually not a problem. By the way, did you hear this? You know, there was some um, uh, criticism about the syndicate from the German premium manufacturers that they all agreed on the maximum kilometer speed of opening or closing a, a rooftop to diminish competition in this field. That someone said, ah, but our ones is now opening, closing at 60 kilometers an hour. But, you know, in this uh, case, um, I'm not sure if I can really share the criticism because, I mean, 50 kilometers an hour is really enough, isn't it? And I'm not even sure if it would be really safe. I mean, opening or closing such a big roof at 70 kilometers an hour. I'm not sure if that was you know, a clever idea just in a you know, physics sense, or what do you think? So if you think about a 343 and want to have some sound enjoyment, especially with open top, this one will be the main difference. And the suspension setup, of course, with the C43 will be stiffer. Other than that, both the C400 and the C43 do come close. This one here rather tells you to relax and have the power reserves. The C43 tells you, mm, you know, I can be very comfortable, but could you please push me a little bit more? So that's the difference then between those two cars. And I can just stress again, it is definitely one of those vehicles where you can enjoy summer the most. And not only summer, because that happened. With those mid-sized convertibles, you can also drive all season and that's also you know would also be the thing i would really enjoy an all season convertible not like you know think about an RUTT or mercedes slc one from the rather small ones which are really summer convertibles this one here i wouldn't mind driving at zero celsius degrees in the winter times even on the motorway maybe just in a, with the beanie or something and then you're absolutely fine Cool. Is that guy driving with the with the mount there on the? Hmm, wow. <laughs> Sometimes you feel uh, like in those Russian dash cam videos <laughs> when strange things happen on the road, don't you? And of course, the most unstrange thing is just that we can enjoy the open top right here a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed it as well.
And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes C-Class convertible. Well, the changes, you have some new lights there for better sight, the high beam optional then, infotainment with those new screens. So definitely a step forward, but it's no reason that you should not buy the old version or something. So it's not a super crucial difference, but surely more fine tuned. In general, this one here remains to me one of the most desirable convertibles because it's very comfortable, especially with the air suspension. The C400 very powerful without going all the way to the rather sporty side of a C43, which would of course still be a great pick. AMG line, my favorite because it has still the diamond pin grille for sure. And such an elegant line, just not too much in design, but very sensual and also on the interior. Of course, not with those red seats, but as I told you earlier, they got great base seats. Um, I would really even go for the base seats. I recently tested at the Mercedes dealer and the base seats are even a little bit more comfortable than the base sport seats. So you got plenty of choice there that you can make yourself comfortable and you still can use it somewhat also in everyday driving life. Not so much trunk there is left, but the mid-size convertible segment here, you can really combine then this open driving fun and also the comfort without being too big like an E-Class convertible. What do you think? Tell me your opinion in the comments and see you next time.